So we're going to be talking about using the React DMD library to create a drag and drop interface. Um, I'm Sarah Rose Battles. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm a recent graduate from the Iron Yards front end engineering course. I'm, uh, I'm currently for hire. Um, the reason I'm familiar with React drag and drop is because I used it in my capstone project. Uh, today we're not going to be walking through my capstone project because it has a lot of other extraneous things. If you would like to see that and the other very cool things that my classmates have been working on, uh, I will see you at the pitch with, uh, next Wednesday, February 22nd uh, for our demo day. Um, if you have questions, you can contact me at srosebattles at gmail.com, at srosebattles on Twitter. Um, that's also my uh, GitHub. You're seeing a pattern here. All right, so I'm going to talk about what I'm going to talk about. Uh, we're going to discuss the setup for a project if you're using React drag and drop, walk through the main components we need to build a simple uh, application with the drag and drop interface. We're going to look at the example of the code we just walked through and uh, then there will be a moment for questions or thoughts. So for the example we're looking at, we're using the HTML5 API. Um, you can implement a touch backend instead as the HTML5 backend is for mouse users. Um, it's one or the other, unfortunately. Um, so uh, you're going to install uh, React drag and drop using npm install React DND. I found that it works as expected when I have my uh, Babel plugin set for the ES7 decorator syntax. Um, I started out uh, writing it in ES6 and I found it worked better when we had the um, static props, uh, static prop types. Um, so our three main components for uh, this application are going to be a draggable item, a drop target, and a container to uh, hold both of those things. So in React, the thing we drag is not the component itself, it's an item. The item is a plain old JavaScript object describing what we're dragging. Um, we start out by creating an item types.js file. In our simple app, this, this one line of code is the whole thing. It's just uh, a box that's described as box. Um, you can name it whatever you want. In a more complex app, you might want to have different item types. You might want to have some targets except certain items, but not others. And so you can, uh, in a, a more complex app, you can have multiple different types of items set. So in our uh, draggable item, which we're calling box, in that, uh, for that component, we're going to import drag source from React DD and the item types we just made, you'll notice that we're not importing the drop target and we're not importing the container. Your box doesn't have to know about, uh, your draggable item doesn't have to know about that. It's just happy to be a little box. Um, so we create a const where we have the begin drag, which all that does is grab the properties we want to uh, be dragging with our item. In this case, it's just the name. Um, all right, thank you. Um, in uh, my project, I also have a couple other properties that uh, I want to keep with what I'm dragging. Um, and then we have our end drag. It, we pass it props and monitor. Monitor is a wrapper that um, grabs the changes to the state of the item as it's being dragged. So um, we, uh, the monitor, when we uh, have monitor on when we grab the item and when we drop it. Um, and we have an alert set for when we drop the item into the drop target because who doesn't like pop-ups, right? 
this is where um, this is one of the places where you will notice the ES7 decorator syntax with the at symbol right there. Um, we uh, drag source is a higher order component that we're pulling in from the uh, library um, and it's something that will wrap the component we're about to make and return another yep no it'll it'll return the new uh, return a new class um, based on the um, sorry, uh, based on the component uh, we wrapped in it um, you can do uh, in es5 es6 uh, you would have at the bottom of your file, you'd have expert default drag source in parentheses and then the uh, component you just created in your parentheses. Um, you'll notice one of the params here, we have a, um, a collector function. So we have the uh, connect and monitor getting passed in. So the collecting function grabs the info that we need um, from the monitors. So we set our prop types. This is the information we expect to get passed. Um, we have uh, connect drag source is dragging and uh, the name of what we're dragging. Um, in our render, we have, we, um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we grab the is dragging and connect drag source, um, the names, and then we, uh, in this example, set the opacity to change while the item is being dragged, and then uh, we return a really simple little box that has the opacity we defined here and the preset styles and just has the item's name in it. So now that we made our uh, draggable box, uh, we need to have a target to drop drop it into. You'll notice some similarities setting this up as with our draggable box. Um, we the target doesn't need to know about uh, the bo the box or the container. Um, it does import a drop target from React drag and drop, which is one of those predefined um, higher order components and item types because we may want this box or make we we may want this target to know what kind of uh, what types of item it will accept or not accept. So um, we define our uh, const box target. It has the name of dustbin. Um, similar to how we started, we have the uh, ES seven decorator syntax. We are including a Collect, collecting function um, right there in the params. We want to know uh, when it connects with the drop target, when we're when something is over the drop target, and whether we can uh, drop it on the target. Uh, did I just okay? Yep. So these are the uh, prop types that we expect the dustbin to have. So this is our dustbin class. We expect it to have these. Um, and then here in the render, um, we define is active as uh, something if we can drop the item and if it is over, um, then we say that the target is active um, and we tell it to change color if it's active or if it uh, can drop, but is not uh, hovering over the the target. Um, and so we return um, a div with our target, and we tell it to change the text depending on whether it's active. So now uh, we just need to make the container. And this is where we do import our, our dustbin, uh, which is the target we just made, and our box. This is uh, where we need our HTML5 backend. And this is the whole entire thing. We have a render where we have um, drag drop context provider from 
uh, from React DD, we have our HTML5 backend, and then we have a div with our dustbin and a div with the boxes we want to be able to drag. So let's see how it works. So this is the um, example from uh, right in the docs. And so we drag uh, a box into the target and we get a little pop-up. And it's changing colors depending on whether it's active or not. Uh, let's see. Sam, how do I get back to the presentation? There we go. All right. Um, if you have questions or thoughts, you can uh, feel free to ask now, or you can contact me at astrosbattles at gmail.com or on Twitter. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so in my final project uh, for the Iron Yard, um, I'm creating an uh, educational phonics app because in my previous career as an educator, I was seeing, you know, a lot of the applications that were available weren't uh, matching the instructional model we were using. So uh, I created a phonics app where the uh, student can drag and drop the letters to match the sound that they hear. Yes. So this isn't a question. Okay. Um, Sarah's was um, just how, how many weeks have you been developing now? Since October. 14, 16 weeks. Mm -hmm. plus eight days in there. And what was your first thing that you said was your biggest fear when you, when you joined? Do you remember? Public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> so, good job. I'm like, uh, yeah. So 16 weeks plus your public speaking. So All right.